Welcome to the Business of Property podcast. I'm Stuart. And I'm Simon. We're both property people running our own businesses. This podcast is just us chatting, as we often do, about anything and everything property. Well, hello, Simon. Hello, Stuart. We are, we're in a, a different landscape at the moment, as we know, because of events that have been happening. And you and I have just been talking about that. But we're trying to reframe it into the more positive state of, you know, how do we how do we plan for these things when well how do you plan for things how do that, you plan for the unknown for it's, the unknown um, it's very difficult isn't it it is and i think all we can do really is have some ideas in mind of how we're going to approach things really rather than yeah. having firm concrete um plans as such um i suppose another approach is to have backup options yeah. So what, one of the things that's potentially in flux at the moment is your um, your flip project. Yeah, thank and you. You've, you've mentioned that you've got a, a backup plan for that. So I suppose that, that's one way where we don't, don't know what's coming, but you can have, if one thing happens, you've got this plan. If another thing happens, yeah. then you've got a second plan. Although in these days, you might need a third or fourth plan. <laughs> I completely agree. And I genuinely was just thinking, I'm not even sure the backup plan is going to be the plan. It could be the, and we know that uh, those plans are the, th- you know, <laughs> what, what's one of my favorite quotes is, um, is every plan looks good until first contact, you know, in, in yeah. war. You <laughs> until know, it hits reality. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Until it... However, at least you've got some sort of structure and, and, and you're absolutely right. And I, I've mentioned it on previous podcasts. Usually when I purchase a property, as ridiculous as it sounds, I'm thinking about at least three exits. So for me in my business, it's when I'm purchasing, I'm looking to buy a student property. But then I then think about student market, uh, sorry, young professional market. Then actually, could I separate the house into flats? Then could I turn it into residential? So with that in mind, the, the flip property that you talked about, first option is obviously as a flip project. I, you know, we, we are literally, when this airs, it will be ready to go. It will be ready to, to sell. However, in current landscape, likelihood is given our market because it's top, top end, it's toppy end. Is that going to be lively? Un- highly unlikely. So second option was to rent it. And I'd always looked at that option anyway. So I've already got um, agreements in principle for a buy to let. I didn't want to go there because, mm. as you know, costs money to do that. Mm. You know, more fees. Have you got any thoughts about when you're going to pull the trigger on that? So will, will you will you try testing the market, do you think? Will you, you put mm. it up for sale and yeah. see how things go? Yeah. yeah how, how long do you think you'll give it? Well, the way we've worked on this before is we would still try and get a tenant in there, even short term. Yeah, so it, yeah. it would just so happen. So the product I've got, that's that's fine right now. Bridging products, we can get someone in there. There are people in these properties because they are, this one's in Croydon. So you wouldn't call it central London, I suppose, greater London. Mm. But it's um, it's it's got all the fundamentals that we talk about. I mean, transport links coming out your ears. <laughs> yeah. It's you know, five, ten minutes from central London. It, it's in a, a very highly populated, dense area anyway of business. So there is likelihood that we could get a short-term let, let from the right market. But would you look for um, sort of business let type thing for that? or Could be. Yeah, could be, could be that. Probably most likely that, to be honest. Would you have to furnish it and things for that? Yeah, so we'll be, I mean, we furnish it anyway, so we're going to dress it oh, okay. because because this is the, the top. So when, when we've Fair done enough. this property, we, we're looking at the top of the market and yeah, we, we wouldn't want to sell this. We wouldn't want to sell this without dressing it because it paints the picture. And particularly when you've taken a one bed to a two stroke three, which is what we've done, we really need to, for people to see what it looks like and we are looking at young professional market and I know that can be quite broad but it's really painting the picture that this is where your bedroom is this is where your desk's going to be and also it's building in that without teaching people to suck eggs it's building the aspiration you know this property is very nice it's on the third or fourth floor actually looking out across Croydon which you know most people might not want a view of that but actually it looks onto the local theatre it's Croydon (laughs) (laughs) exactly (laughs) Um, we are, Sorry, of course, joking. <laughs> no offence to anyone that lives in this area. 
Um, but no, it, it is it is a nice view actually. And if you're if you're a young, prof- young professional, I think it is quite aspirational. However, we want to put all those things in place. So we'll, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it's a definite skill being able to walk around a property and uh, sorry, walk around an empty property and imagine how that's actually going to be for you to live in or for anyone to live in. I don't know about um, you. It's always surprised me that people. I love walking into a property where it's just either empty mm-hmm. or it's in a bit a state of disrepair. Because I think, oh, there's opportunity yeah, here. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, you can you can picture all of the, all of the improvements you can do, or you can yeah, you, you can picture how it would be or could be. But it's yeah. amazing the amount of buyers that have rejected properties that I might have bought that I have bought because they didn't visualise it. And I suppose that's 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 a good thing. Or I suppose if you're buying it as a residence, and I'm just trying to think about that, my wife's reaction. But she, you know, she'd say, oh, we could do this or that. I know, but I know there's some people they walk around and, you know, there's washing on the floor like people with clothes washing on mm-hmm. the floor that's an instant reject and you're like i know I, I've, I, I don't think i've ever witnessed it but i've heard stories of that before and it's, but people the people leaving will take that with them <laughs> did i tell you about the property i viewed where the woman was cutting hair in the kitchen uh, i don't think so so i went to view a property we are digressing massively from the topic <laughs> it's, it's okay we never do that normally <laughs> the exception will be fine so this was a property in kent just down the, the A25, actually. And it was a, a kind of like a bungalow property, but the bedroom was up in the loft and actually had a ladder to get in the loft. And this is when I was looking to buy, to live. And so we went to see the property. I walked in with my wife. The woman let us in. She said, just show yourself around. I'm just um, cutting someone's hair. So I was walking around, go into the kitchen. And she, you know, true to form, she is there. She's in the kitchen. Someone sat in her kitchen. She's cutting hair. There's hair all over the floor. So we mm-hmm. couldn't, couldn't actually go into the kitchen. And that was, obviously, we raised an eyebrow at that, given that you know, if you know you've got a viewing, that's a strange time to invite someone around to cut hair. <laughs> yeah. But then we went, so you had to climb up this ladder to get into the bedroom, climbed up the ladder, poked my head up. The bed was unmade. Okay, fine, cope with that. I mean, I've, I work in student property. I've seen a lot worse. <laughs> but the bed was unmade. And this, this is a sort of like a family property. The bed was unmade. And then there was clothing all over the floor, Bearing in mind, you, your head's the first thing. And all I'm going to say is there was underwear laying around. I'm not going to be any more explicit than that. But that was one of those where I just looked down the ladder and I said to my wife, just pretend you've come up this ladder because you won't want to see what's up here. <laughs> and that was one of those where we'd kind of decided we didn't want the property anyway because of where it was situated. Mm-hmm. So that might have presented itself as an opportunity for us if if we'd have liked the location of the property. We would kind of... Mm-hmm. but. You know, it's just one of those where clearly not trying very hard to sell it. No, and and that's that that was kind of where I got to. So I thought, do they really want to sell this place, or is it being rented? I wasn't quite sure in the end. Yeah, I suppose if it's if it's being rented and the tenants in there, they yeah, probably aren't that one. Well, no, no, being yeah. sold. <laughs> but I don't remember that it was. It certainly wasn't given to us. But anyway, we've digressed um, slightly. But the point we were making was particularly with the properties the property that i'm about to try and uh, sell is that we need to get people to to be really clear about what that property can do for them and an empty property in a you know where we've increased a lot hopefully increased a lot of value at least 50 percent of the property's value then we need to you know even to the degree we'll be putting fruit bowls in there and fruit in the bowl and yeah real, real filters. Fruit? plastic fruit um, if it looks really good maybe plastic <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll pop there once a week so we'll buy the fruit mm-hmm. so yeah, so um, just to you know, to answer the the question of the this topic was, you know, yes, we're going to try and flip it, but we will get someone in, hopefully short term. But depending on the market, longer term, if that doesn't pan out, what are the options? Well, we've got to hold on to it um, and try and get the best product possible, so that there is some margin in the rent. The other challenge I've got is just with investors, but that's just going to cost me money mm. because of the interest. But so standard buy to let portfolio you know mine's student so we, we touched on that in a previous uh, interview but just from, from your perspective what, what are your thoughts around how you plan for uncertain times make it up as you go along um <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's what we can do really i think rather than having concrete plans as i mentioned already it's just about having an open mind um a willingness to be flexible and to talk through the problems, listen to what the problems are. Uh, I'm fully expecting that at least one, probably or possibly more, of my tenants are going to have some difficulties in the, in the coming weeks and months. And mm. it's 
I, I don't know exactly what those are going to be. I don't know what government backup there might be for, for them or for, for me. And until all of those things get worked out and are, are talked about, I can't make a, a, a concrete plan of action, I don't think. It's just, uh, it's just a need to be flexible and, uh, and approach it sensibly. I suspect I will need to be flexible in some way, shape or form. Mm. Um, I mean, I have my own bills to pay, my own family to feed. There are limits on, on the flexibility I, I have open to myself. Mm. But uh, it, it's, it, I suspect some will be needed. Can I ask you a question on this? Do you have any sort of fund... This isn't to excuse any of your tenants, but do you have you a sort of fund in preparation for these types of events? Do, do I have an emergency fund? Do you mean sort of a, a yeah? Cash you know, like the, the standard store. advice would say, you know, for each property, have at least one month's mortgage plus maintenance and void, you know, allowance. Yes, I do. Um, you bugger! It's <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um, it's. Currently, um, it's currently at a lower level than I would normally maintain mm. it because there have been some random expenses in the last probably six months or so actually is when it went down and I gradually started building it up a bit and then uh, some more in the last couple of months have knocked it down a bit more. Um, so uh, I, I don't really go in for the working out 10% of rent or whatever, uh, but I hold a, or I aim to hold a 10K slush fund yeah um, across my portfolio slush fund, yeah. and uh my slush fund is currently at about uh, 5k so it's 50 percent of what i would like it to be to feel comfortable so that that's another element that means i'm not in as, as strong a position as i might like to be mm. but then stronger than than a lot i mean i've never been able to get into that position because of the amount of costs coming out of the business i don't know they're very different scenarios but that's exactly the sort of position I think we should all be aspiring to be in or have is, you know, covering at least one month's outgoings. And I think that's a good business practice, isn't it? But practice yeah. is easy. Yeah. Well, I mean, if that, that slush fund is designed to um, sort of cover emergency mortgage payments if rent doesn't come in or um, emergency repairs, if, if that sort of thing is needed, uh, if it was needing, if I was needing to use that to, pay my personal mortgage or feed my family it's not going to last mm. well more than one month basically yeah um so so yeah it, it needs to not have to cover that <laughs> yeah. so it, it depends on the the level of expenses that we're we're looking at it it uh tidying us over for and of course that's worst case scenario i mean you know you'd be doing a lot of other things before you had to dip into that and that's working yeah. with tenants working with yeah, providers, yeah. you know, yeah. that kind of thing. And, and of course, I do have other income as well. Yeah. The, the rental income isn't, isn't my, uh, my sole income, thank goodness. But I think that is why, and, you know, for me, it's an aspiration. And I, and I, I know that I'm at the different end of a spectrum to, to a lot of people where I do, I do, I sell very close to the wind, too close to the wind. You know, in all honesty, I want to get away from it. But that's why prudent reserve is so important. It just happens that, you know, as you know, I've been trying to build this business for three years, but I'm now in a situation where I want to start making sure the business can survive that, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's tricky, isn't it? I, I, I would like to be more aggressive in my, in the building of my property portfolio. And indeed my sort of goals and plans for this year were on the more aggressive side. But right now I'm actually quite thankful i haven't got as far as implementing much of that yet um <laughs> because it it means that now now this has happened i, I do still have a, a yeah. little bit of, of safety net in Th this in is places. why we need to go to business skill Simon. i think because you you you, we, you can be the yin to my yang <laughs> <laughs> well I, I i'm not convinced because i you, you say you like sailing close to the wind and and my natural instinct as well is to to buy 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 and yeah. build 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 and 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 sail close to the wind as well it's um it's only by accident that i'm currently not <laughs> <laughs> well that wouldn't be good if we were both sailing close to the wind we'd be we'd have sailed through the wind <laughs> yes yeah, quite well as long as there weren't any uh any viruses floating on that wind i'm sure it'd be fine oh god yeah <laughs> um so i'm, I'm going to change the subject a little bit and um uh mention some things that i've been working on recently 
So the uh, uh, the other property business I have beside my actual property portfolio is uh, is Patma, uh, property and tenant manager, which is a, a software yep. product. And one of the things that I created as part of that is a, a browser extension, which I know you you use as well. I do, good. and it uh, provides extra data on uh, properties and surrounding areas while you're looking at them on property portals, so Rightmove and Zoopla and things. And I've been working for the last few weeks on some enhancements to this, and they are now live. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. It's taken me a bit longer than I was hoping to, to actually get them out there, but they, they are there now. And now when, you, uh, when you're when you viewing a, a property, on Rightmove in particular, you get some uh, extra comparable information, some uh, links to some help pages about how those comparables are, are pulled together and where, where the data comes from, uh, and even some little graphs. Um, they're, uh, they're, they're box and whisper. Oh, there, box and a whisker. <laughs> Easy I thought you were offering say, me a apparently. box of whispers. I was going to take that. Yes, please. <laughs> Sorry. No, no chocolate. <laughs> um, yeah, box and whisker charts. Um, uh, have you come across these, this chart? No, I do not know what they are. Okay, so they... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to get the math terribly wrong, but but there's there's a box in the middle, which is sort of the the, the bulk of the uh, where, where the bulk of the numbers are. So no, actually, let me take a step back. If you've got a range of numbers, so in this case we're looking at uh, property listing prices um, in a in a given area with properties of a certain type. So maybe you've got ten prices. Uh, they range from two hundred thousand up to three hundred fifty thousand. Uh, so the 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 box in the middle of the chart is I think uh, where fifty percent of the, uh, the those numbers fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have a line somewhere within that box which is where the median price is. So, so sometimes that's in the middle, but quite often it's it's not. It's more down towards one end or the other. And then you have lines uh, sticking out each side, which are the whiskers, um, and they extend to the ninety fifth percentile on each side. So the, the lowest 95th and the highest 95th. Um, to, to give you an idea of where the bulk of those prices are and where the the lower end and the upper end extend to. Uh, and the the new uh, visualisation in the, the browser extension shows one of these for uh, property listings, one for rental listings, and one for sold prices. And the... The for sale and the sold are actually aligned on, on sort of the same scale, so you can kind of see how they differ. It's actually quite quite interesting. Mm. Pretty much everywhere I've looked, the the sold prices are slightly to the left mm. of the the listing prices, which I mean I suppose is what you'd expect in, in the market for the yeah. last few years. Basically, showing that the properties are, are generally selling for less than they're listed for. But it's, it's quite interesting to, to see that visualized. Oh, it's really interesting. And does it? So can you approximate the you know the percentage difference between sold and uh, value, you know selling price, L- listing and sold price. Listing, yeah. Um, uh, I suppose I could. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I'm not looking for new feature requests just at this moment. <laughs> uh, no, no. But I mean, based on that information, that would give you an idea anyway, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, the 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 visualization in the browser extension is is tiny. You've, yeah. it's, uh, it's only got a small bit of real estate to or screen real estate to um, yeah. play with, so it's, it's tiny. You couldn't work that out from what you can see in the browser extension. But the, the data behind it certainly could, could provide that. Awesome. And so I'll, uh, I'll have to add that to my to-do list to, uh, <laughs> to extend it. Sorry. We'll, um, <laughs> obviously, we'll put the URL in the um, show notes so that people can just have a Indeed. squiz yeah, of yeah. that. Um, I think we're really short of time today, aren't we? And you need to, uh, you need to end yes. things here, don't we? Yeah. So, um, well, we've just mentioned the show notes there. So we'll add that so you can go and look at this new visualization and i can say from personal experience it's it's really good to to get this extension on your browser particularly if you're you know in the market for properties just to see because we were talking about this on another episode where some properties have gone back on and their prices increased just because that suited the estate agent to do that so it's good to know that history if you haven't got a a plug-in i'd certainly recommend it for everything else i would go to the businessofproperty.com